Hello, I am Angela B. Chrysler, and we'll be reading The Last Ranger of Sarn by author and copyright holder Ed Ireland, who has approved this reading. The music grew louder and faster, and the serpentine lines of dancers moved along to the strains of it as the musicians finally made their way to the middle of the clearing. Jan Rangsong was lifted into a barrel in the center of the group. She stood perched on one leg, and the others balanced against it, playing the flute as loudly as possible. The notes of the music weaved their spell and called the dancers in, moving them in a circle around her and the others until the entire line formed a huge spiral around the players. Then, as the music abruptly stopped, a thunderous cheer went up from the dancers. The musicians had crafted their spell on the crowd beautifully and now exited the clearing, leaving them spent and exhausted, as if they had spent the last few minutes locked in the embrace of passion. Still clutching Belle's hand, Vespias made her way to the family campsite and collapsed in a giggling heap next to her mother. What a wonderful way to end the evening, she exclaimed breathlessly. My little sister certainly knows how they get a crowd moving. Mail excused herself and led her three daughters away toward their tents, while the twins giggled and teased Vespius about Belle. Bregan sat quietly at the fire, his pipe in hand and smoke circling into the night sky above him. What did you plan on going, Belle? he asked in a casual yet direct way. It was only turned to the north, and after that just the sea. A boat to some unknown location, perhaps? That was my plan, sir, came the quick reply, but I'm not so sure now. I had wanted to see what this planet had to offer, but now his words trailed off as he tried to find the right ones to express what was going through his mind. Yes, he wanted to search the world for the hidden gems of life, the beautiful sceneries, the thought-provoking people and their rituals, the rich tapestries the world could offer. But something changed this night. His world was different now. He had suddenly seen something that absolutely nothing in this world could match, could possibly hope to rival. He struggled to find words that had not been invented to tell Regan how he felt. Mercifully, the elder Castian knew exactly what he was trying to say and took the conversation back again. You know, I could use help, more help at home, he said softly. There are always things to get done there, and I never seem to have the time to do them. I'd been thinking of hiring a strong young man to work with me. Interested? The smile on Belle's face was his answer, and with a handshake the deal was set, and the young Castian would be going back to the First Light home, and more importantly, would now be able to get to know the woman who had captured him so easily, and now held him as more than willing prisoner. There was so much about her he did not know, yet he was sure that nothing would throw him off of her now. For all he knew, she could have a dozen bodies buried under her home, and he would just, and he would just help her move to them to a better hiding spot if she asked. The night skies blanketed him, the stars moving slowly across the heavens, winking their approval as if they knew. He could hear his own heart beating, and the last thought in his mind was Vespius's face and her smile, and that lulled him into his first good sleep in weeks, no longer haunted by the scene he was stumbled upon in the hills just beyond the Pass of Sarn.